Hey folks, uh, I just wanted to go over the pieces of my night vision system that I built. Um, the grand total cost for this was in the neighborhood of about, I think about $80. Um, I've spent more money than that on it because I've been experimenting and playing around and trying to find a better way to do it. But um, I thought there were a couple of people asking me about it and uh, I thought I'd just make a quick video to show them how I did it. Um, all of the pieces I sourced originally off of eBay, but I really kind of hate eBay, so I found alternate sources at Amazon.com, and I'll put those in the uh, doobly-doo down below on the video, and um, I guess uh, to show you guys what it is that I made, I will switch the uh, camera around so that you can see it. Just a moment. Okay, so without power, you don't have a night vision system. So these, this is a little tiny uh, battery. It's a small battery power pack. Um, it's 12 volt if I remember correctly, 12.6 volt according to the label. Um, it has power in, power out. Um, one weird little quirk about this, when you're charging it, you have to turn the power on or else it won't charge. I don't know why that is, but it is what it is. Uh, the next piece of this is a power splitter. I forget what the actual uh, dimensions are on this, but you know it's a couple millimeters. It's like three millimeters or two and a half millimeters or something like that. I forget what it is. But um, the purpose of this is to split the power coming out of the battery and delivering it to the monitor, the DVR, and then into the camera. Now the camera you can't really see, but it's hidden inside this uh, tube that I've built. So what I did was, um, I will start at the camera. So inside here is the camera and it is a, uh, a little tiny mobile, they call it a security camera, but um, I think it actually is designed to be used in RC airplanes and drones and things like that because it's really tiny. It's about an inch square and maybe three quarters of an inch at its thickest point where the lens is at the center of the square. Um, and then the, I bought a, it's a turbo ho hose from, for a car. Uh, I think it was two and a half inches in diameter. And I put, put a couple of hose clamps on it. And then there is a plumbing fitting in the back. It's a piece of flexible rubber. And I just punched a hole in the back and threaded the wires through. Um, and then I taped them at the bottom as securely as I could so that the wire wouldn't move because it's a pretty thin fragile wire so we don't want to mess that up but anyway that wire comes down and you have two cables a red cable which is curiously similar to the uh, Y power splitter and you have this I think these are called bin connectors I don't know what that stands for I'll have to look that up sometime but um, anyway they're different than an RCA cable, and it took me a while to uh, find out how to use that, but it plugs into the DVR right here, and the way that works is it plugs in, and then it you, you twist it, and it locks into place. You can see there's a little divot there, and that matches up with the pins that are on this. And then coming out of that, find it. There's power and there's another bin connector. You may be wondering, well what is that for? Well that is video out. And this is power, uh, let's see, power out to the camera and this one is power in from the battery. So I'm going to try to, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to attempt plug this all in so you can see how it works and I apologize if it looks a little bit hokey. So here is the, uh, let's see if I can get this, the uh, video cable for the LCD monitor and there's a little bin adapter. It plugs into the RCA cable. And this plugs into the DVR, twist it and it locks into place. The video cable then plugs into, this is hard to do when you keep it in the video. Now let me move this so you can see it. Apologies. 
We have to hold on to it so it won't lock. Okay, that's locked. Now, we need power for the camera, right? Here is our uh, twin cable splitter. It's just a, a Y. So one of these is going to go to the DVR. And then one of these goes to the Y power splitter. Now, the LCD screen needs power too. So the other Y power splitter plugs into that. And then the end of the Y power splitter, let's say female connector, plugs into the male from the battery. Now when you turn on, let's see if I can tilt this up, when I turn on the power, let me take off the lens cap on this. We should have power here, maybe. Unless I did it all backwards. Yeah, I must have. Yeah, it says it has power. Oh, there it is. Just took a second for the DVR to boot up. So let's see if I can look through the. I'm moving my. Actually, moving my rifle around because the camera is back here. I'll try to do this. Ah. Hold on to something. Okay, I've got a bad power connection. But forgot to mention. Let's see if I can get this focused on something that's. A little darker so that it means something. Um, this is with the lights on in my house obviously so I'm going to turn out the lights and then I'm going to turn on the uh, infrared uh, infrared torch that I have on the front of this. Give me just a second to turn out the lights. So there's the, that doorknob, and that's almost completely dark. I don't know if the... And I think the battery's dead in my torch. Great. Okay, so one of the things that occurred to me is um, that I can't actually show you the camera because it is stuck inside that turbo uh, air uh, hose. And I, there's no way to easily get it off and put it back on and make sure it's square again. So um, I'm going to try to grab a still off of the Amazon website, and I'll post that in the video and at the end of this to show you. Um, but I did have some of the extra parts that I bought that I used to play around with trying to figure out how to attach the thing to a scope. So this is uh, the first thing that I bought. You can see it's just a rubber hose. It's, it's flexible and it's a, a laminate. There's some cloth impregnated in it. Uh, it's silicone rubber, so it's high temperature, but it's black, so no light gets through it. Um, and I bought some other stuff. So there's a, like a, another plumbing fixture. And here's a, another piece that I bought. So I didn't know what sizes I was going to need or I wasn't even sure which scope I was going to put it on, so I had to kind of cover all my bases. Um, some of the other ideas I toyed with, and I think this for other people with other guns and things, this might work also, but I also had some, uh, this is just PVC or ABS, I'm not sure. I think, this one, I think this one's ABS, and I think this one's PVC, but one's black, one's white, but both of them will block light. Um, so... And it just coincidentally, they fit inside each other, which I thought was kind of, I mean, they fit so tight that you can actually create a vacuum in there, which I thought was kind of cool. But um, so anyway, those are some of the ideas that I played with for different ways to mount the camera 
Um, and like I said, the, the system that I came up with ultimately is it's a little hokey, but it works. Um, and it's actually pretty stable and solid. I've carried my rifle around with me and I shot it in the backyard. I've taken it out to a friend's house, stuff like that. So it's fairly stout. Uh, the one thing I do need to come up with a better solution for is how to mount the video camera. I saw someone online posted a photo of what they did and they actually had a um, Picatinny mount that they fabricated at the bottom of the monitor. Now the monitor looks like this to give you an idea and it's designed to mount on the dashboard of your car or on the window or something like that so I think it's supposed to kind of go like this so you can have a camera pointed out the front of your car and then this or maybe a rear view camera I'm not sure but um, at any rate I'm still trying to figure out how to mount this best and right now the system I have is not real pretty let me show you what it looks like whenever I get the uh, monitor on there so what I have is just let's see if I can get this some rubber bands and see if I can point that up there so I crisscross the rubber bands so that they go over one side of the base and the other one goes over the other side of the base and they kind of sit on the uh, scope the the adjustment turrets so it it actually it holds it pretty steady on there but it, because this thing sticks out I didn't want it breaking in this way with rubber bands it just kind of flops around it's almost like a spring load so it works out pretty well um, I'm still working on the best way to attach all of these components to the rifle while I'm out in the field or uh, if I'm shooting off a bench it doesn't really matter I just plop all this mess of wires down on the table but when I'm moving around, I actually have to kind of bundle it all up. I've tried a couple of different ways. I wrap it all up in uh, electrical tape. I've tried putting it in a bag that I hang off the gun. and Nothing has really worked real well yet, but eventually I'll come up with something. Um, I have some electrical project boxes that I bought off of eBay. and uh, You can also get them off of Amazon, of course. But um, these are just empty black boxes, and they are almost big enough to fit all the components in but not quite so um, I'll see if maybe I can figure out some combination of maybe one of these on each side of the rifle attached somehow or something like that but um, anyway that's what I still have to do uh, so coming up here I have some video of me shooting uh, the gun during the day and you can see it's kind of like a, a funky color because I think because of the IR filter on the camera um, but it's really bright, and I think the video is pretty crisp. It also gives you a, an example of what the uh, DVR captures. And then after that, I, I do a little target shooting, like a series of 10 shots on paper, and, and it's in my backyard. It's only 10 yards. But um, And then after that, I do 10 shots or so at night, and that is actually pretty interesting to me because I was playing around with different infrared uh, light emitters and found one that works pretty well and it's really cheap which is really nice but it's uh the way it's mounted is not ideal so again i'm still working on ironing out all the pieces of that but i hope just to give people some ideas and then they'll come up with their own solutions all right um i think that's it if you want to get in touch with me you can find me on the forums and you can also probably um just leave me a message on this video and I will try to respond to people. I'm, this isn't going to be my life, but I will get back to you as soon as I can if I see the message. All right, have a good one. Bye.
the thing I wanted to show everyone. You may have seen it a little bit earlier in the video. There was a big tangled mess of wires on the edge of my table. And uh, that is kind of a special treat that I have for another video, but I'll, I'm going to post a little quick shot of it and see if anyone can guess what it is or what it's going to be. All right, so see if you can guess what this is or what it's going to be. And I'll give you a hint. It uses almost all of the same components as the night vision system, but there's one extra piece in it. Actually, two if you want to get picky.